Sometimes being on the homestead can cause you to have Tourette's. What I mean by that is sometimes when you think things are going very well, things could turn out to be the worst. When we first started out on this homestead, we were good on how things were started out for us. We started out with some turkeys and some chickens with minimum loss. We thought we were very successful compared to how other people had dealt with them. Then when we went and started our garden, even though we started out very late during the summer season, it still flourished very well for us. Now we're at 2022 and with this cold weather coming through, a lot of things haven't been as what we hoped they would be. And I'll show you why. So here we're out in our kitchen garden and we did a video on how to protect your garden from the frost. We'll put the card above so that way you can check that out. But we had our garden uh, protected from the frost and it would just constantly, constantly within that range where it was either minimal freezing to light freeze to hard freeze. One week where we had minimum above, like above 45, 55 degrees, we uncovered it and saw that a lot of us was hit with the frost damage. So we decided to let this basically go to get prepared for our spring garden. Uh, we were gonna have our ducks in this area and start picking through here and just taking out the leaves and the uh, bugs, if there's any uh, bugs or grow worms, snails, whatever it may be in here. But we had a few attacks of uh, some hawks taking some of our ducks. So we decided to uh, 86 that idea and move them somewhere else. So what we're going to do on here is we're going to harvest all of the dead frost bitten leaves, leave the stem into the, in the uh, beds and let that carbon go back into the soil. So that way, come springtime, we'd be prepared for us to start our, um, our garden. Now, we are gonna be doing a spring planting. We're gonna start getting some seeds together to find out how we're gonna do this. Uh, we're gonna be a lot more prepared than what we were for our summer garden. So stay tuned for that. We changed a lot of plans for some of the experiments that we had coming up because we took on a much bigger, project than we ever thought that we would. We took on 100 baby breast chicks. We thought it was a really great thing, but we've had some losses and some lessons with this decision. We have had great success with chicks, but we feel that the mistake we made was doing this when the weather was cold. We've never experienced having baby chicks in the cold weather. We don't believe that it is a quality issue with Breast Farm at all. We feel like it is a weather issue. The food decision that we made was a little different than what we did with our other chicks. And so we've had some pasty butt issues. When they arrived, we had just had a freeze and we were having trouble right out the gate with regulating the temperatures. It's a sad lesson that we are learning from. I hope that one's still alive. I'm so, oh, no, it's not. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. So wait. Got poop all over it. I've had the hardest time coming out here because of the losses. Out of a hundred baby birds, we have close to 30-ish left. Yeah, we got 33 coming more because when we first got these, they were already dead. And so we contact Justin Moss from uh, Breast Farms and he, uh, responded very quickly and said, we'll send you out these uh, here in the upcoming upcoming weeks. Uh, but we showed them pictures of this, uh, where this can be able to hold uh, 250 baby chicks. And we split it up because we had turkeys on one side, uh, 20 turkeys on one side and uh, 30 chickens on the other side. And uh, we said we have adequate room for him, so it, you know, don't. I, ho I was hoping that he didn't say, well, well, you maybe didn't have this, but he was very compliant and had very, very nice customer service. I uh, was like, here you go, we'll send it out to you here shortly. So 
I, I love their customer service from the uh, Breast Farm. So what we did to kind of help out with the situation, since it's real cold in this garage, is we added extra heat lamps on one particular side. And then we also added a lamp uh, that she was gonna put out in the patio area that we had in the garage. So that way kind of warm up the total space of the garage so it wouldn't be too cold. And then we got a digital thermostat and what it does is it goes has three sensors so we put one sensor on one side one sensor on the other side and one sensor out in the garage and then we have a reader in uh, the house so we know before we come out here what's the temperature and i think that kind of helped out to help us know what the temperature is out in the broody box so the temperature has been about in the upper 70s lower 80s and we know that when they first come out that they need to be at least minimum 98 degrees. So that was, like I said, what we fell to uh, get the temperature up to where they need it. I know a lot of people are gonna get us on the heat lamp, but right now that's what we have. Uh, the radiant heat uh, table box, whatever, from what I was reading on it, for the amount of chicks that we had, we would have to basically put them out throughout this whole area and because they don't put out enough heat they put out safe heat but they don't put out enough heat to keep your chicks warm and that was one of the main things with this issue you'll see them hovering over the particular lamp we move the food away from the heat area so that way while some chicks are trying to stay warm the other chicks that's eating on it won't be smushed on the chicks that's laying down so now from moving forward, we're gonna probably be ordering our chickens through in around the springtime, about March, April time frame, where in Texas, it gets a little bit warmer, which we found out that we're not actually 8A, we're actually 7B after looking at the USDA, which means we're about 10 to 20 degrees cooler than what we were. And we're only like an hour, about an hour and some change where our previous place was at. It's a lesson learned. Uh, like I said, homesteading, you just got to adapt, learn to adapt and overcome. overcome and sit back where your, where your failure is at and see how you can improve it and adjust from there. So these are all valuable lessons for us. And like I said, we started out as an urban backyard garden gardeners and we decided to do this homestead thing. We're not experts. We just trying to document this to kind of let people that want to uh, follow this path learn from our mistakes so you don't do the same mistakes. So it is 23 degrees out on this Saturday morning. Thankfully, Hissia donated some of these boots because they have been keeping our feet nice and warm. Do you have cushion on yours? Um, yes, there's cushion and it's come in handy because I've been able to just bust through the water buckets with my foot, like just to break it up and get the chunks out. And I haven't had any issues with any freezing or anything like that with our boots. Yeah. So we're going to show you right now where we moved the ducks at. As you know, uh, we've been getting a few hawk attacks uh, and two of our ducks, Harlequin, Welsh Harlequin ducks, have been killed. In the past week. In the past week, within the last, yeah, within the past week. Uh, so we moved them out over near the pond, getting them further away from the road. And we're going to uh, put Kevin and two hens out there. Yeah, um, we don't know if it's by coincidence, but the second loss happened right after I moved Kevin out. So I don't know if he was part of the reason that they didn't attack the few days in between, but it's, you know, by coincidence and it was working. So I want to get him back in there until we get some other systems in place. We'd like to get a goose. We had a lot of feedback from a lot of our viewers. A lot of them were saying, get some dogs. We're not going to get any dogs until we get uh, sheep and goats. Uh, they also was talking about getting some goose, uh, which we did plan to get some goose anyway. They'd probably be here around March, April time frame. Uh, then we got to get them up and up into the size. Uh, a few of them are talking about getting some reflector, mylar. We have that on order. Yeah. We are going to get those and put them in different areas. It's supposed to throw off the depth perception of hawks. So that's the purpose of that. So that's why we're going to get that. And then we're going to get some hawk netting. Yeah. 
We understand that it's not going to cover all of the area we're going to have them in. However, we are going to drape it in areas because this is now going to be the duck's permanent space. And for right now that we know things change on the homestead. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you said that because we do always like even though I have in my mind that they're always going to be right here. Anything can happen. And that's why we have stuff mobile and not permanent. But uh, the netting that we're going to put up, we are going to use it not in a permanent fashion. We're going to get some buckets, put cement and uh, some, posts in there. some posts in there so that we can move those around. But we're going to put it in a section where the ducks hang out the most just to give them an extra little protective zone. And the funny thing about today, since it's so cold, our pond actually froze. Let, check this out. It's never froze before. This is the first time. The chickens are upset. They're used to having their feed by now. Oh, poor babies. They're all inside. Oh, there's not one out? Is uh -huh. the thing broken? Let's go check on that. One. Yeah, let's... That's unusual. I thought I saw them out. Or maybe I just heard them. Are they still stuck in there? The door is open. No, it's not. Oh. <laughs> They're all in there. Why didn't it open? <laughs> Your mama did it. No, I haven't done anything with it. Do we need to change the battery? Open says me. Come on now. We moved the ducks here last night. They have not been out in this area. This is our first time introducing them to a real pond instead of the pool that we normally had, the little duck pool that they normally had. So it's going to be interesting because they're going to be first time on here, but it's going to be frozen. So let's see how this goes. We're going to have to try to bust it open. Are you going to throw something out? Let's see. <coughs> wow. I've never seen this pond frozen. This is our first time seeing this. Whoa. <laughs> oh, you trying to fall in? You going to break it up? Well, That's not how I want to break it up. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to do a belly flop for us? Nah. Come on, babe. You first. Do it for the fans. No, this ain't <laughs> no for the fans thing. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wait, there's some soft areas. I saw. Right here? Yeah, but go a little more to your left. Uh, to your right a little bit. Where? Where? Tell me Where you see starting. the jiggle. Yeah, you see that jiggle right there? It's deep. There. Yeah, start busting it for them. Well, I want to see how they react for us. Oh yeah, let's see. As Morgan used to say, would say, release. The quacking. <laughs> <laughs> we got to stretch our wings out. We've had them locked in for two days. Oh, oh, oh. First day and it's confusing. Just our luck. 
So the good thing about this area, we have a lot of uh, persimmons that are on the ground just rotting out. So they will be able to be eating a lot of these uh, persimmons that fell off. So it's gonna be a good treat for them. They're right now, they're like all confused. Like I've never seen this much light, open space. <laughs> yeah, they're very interested. Now we don't want to paint homesteading as a perfect picture. We are no experts when it comes to homesteading. And with these failures, they have hurt us, yet we have gained experience to be better. We are still learning. We would not trade these moments for anything.